Hello there and welcome to this video in which we're going to carry on looking at Synapse Link for Dataverse using Dynamics 365 Sales as the source data. Now if you haven't checked out the first video then I fully recommend doing that because that kind of gives context to what we're going to do in this video. So there'll be a link around somewhere for that first video so please go and check that out. Now what we're going to look at in this video is an advanced configuration setting called append only and it's just another method in how the synapse link will write the data out to the data lake. In effect it's not going to remove any data from the data lake so when you update data and when you delete data the original rows will still exist and the new data and the updated data will be written. But I want to go through that in this video. So we're going to look at inserting new data, updating existing data and deleting data. So I'm going to jump into the Power Apps portal and I've already configured three tables in my Synapse link. And what you can notice, and we're going to concentrate on the contact table, because the contact table is the table that I've configured as append only. Now really all we need to do is when we manage tables and add a table to the synchronization process, so let's say I want opportunity to be synced, I'm going to click opportunity, I'm going to drop down advanced, click the show advanced configuration settings and I really only have two settings, I can select append only or the partition. Now the partition just dictates the partition files in the data lake and we'll see that when we have a look at uh, append only. Suffice to say if I select append only the only partition option is year so the files in the data lake are going to be partitioned by year. So I'm going to cancel that. So we've got our three tables, I've already synchronized the data so if we go into Synapse, okay, I've connected to the lake database that was created during the Synapse link creation process. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to select some data from the contact table. So I'm going to bring that up. And the first thing we'll look at is the row count. Okay, so we've got 12 rows of data in that contact table at the moment. And if we have a look, we've got some fields that I'm pulling. The ID is really important when we look at updating and deleting data. It's essentially a non-unique ID of that row. So for example, in the contact table, it isn't actually contact ID. And also we need to concentrate on this job title because that's what we're going to change when we update data. Anyway, I've got 12 rows of data in my data set. If I have a look at the underlying storage, I've got two CSV files. Those two CSV files are the files that back end those 12 rows of data. And it's the created on, so I'm just going to expand that over to the right, okay, it's this created on column here. That's the column that dictates which partition file the row will go into. Now we're partitioned by year, so if the row was created in 2022, it's going to go into the 2022 CSV file. If it's 2023, it will go into the 2023 file. So if we go into Dynamics and go into Contacts, what we'll do is we'll add a new contact. Okay, so first name, um, we'll just add me in. So, okay, and let's, let's, say my job title is data engineer okay so I'm going to save and close 
Okay, so now we've got a new contact. So we've got 13 contacts now in Dynamics. What we'll do is we'll wait for that to synchronize. So it's probably going to be a bit of a jump cut because even though the tables are near real time, it can still take a few seconds to a couple of minutes to synchronize that data. Okay, so we're back. It actually only took a few seconds to synchronize. But now we see we've got a new record here. We've got 13 rows. We've got me, I've been added, and my job title is Data Engineer. And we can see we've got a created on of 2023. Okay, so we've got, whoops. We've got the created on there. And actually, if we go and have a look, I'm not going to open the file. I'm going to refresh and there we go. We can see that we have seven minutes past 12 and the 2023 file has been written to. Nice and simple. Okay, so we've created some data in Dynamics and that's synchronized and it's just simply added the row to the CSV file. Now, in terms of updating, what we'll do is we're going to go back to my record. So I'm going to go in here and actually my job title now has changed and I'm now, lucky me, a senior data engineer. Okay, so I'm going to save that. Now we've changed the data, we've modified the data. The default when you set up, set up Synapse Link is in place update. So what it'll do is the Synapse Link will go to the appropriate file and it'll just overwrite the data. It'll overwrite the existing row. But now what happens is, so what I'll do is I'm going to go to the Dataverse. I'm going to click Refresh and we've actually got a sync. Now you'll see that the count has actually incremented by one because we've now got a new row for the updated data. Let's go back to Synapse. This time, what I'll do, I'm gonna take the ID and I'm gonna copy that. And now I'm gonna run my select statement just for that ID. And we'll see that actually we've got two rows. One is the existing data, untouched, unmodified. The next is my updated data. So we can see that I've got the created on. Okay, so it's the same as the original row. So that created on, it doesn't change. But we've got the modified column here so I'm going to expand the modified and we can see that the modified date is when we modified the data in the Dataverse in Dynamics. So it's useful for ETL and data loading processes. Okay we've got our original data, we've got our changed data and the correlation is the ID. Now, the reason I don't say contact ID is when we come and look at what happens when you delete data, okay? So now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna delete me from the content, from the contacts in Dynamics. So let's go back into Dynamics and it's not just a case of deactivating me, it's a case of hard deleting me from the Dynamics environment. Now again, using the default in place update, what that's going to do is just going to remove it from that CSV file in the data lake. We'll go back to the Dataverse and it looks to be refreshing pretty quickly. So I'm just going to hit refresh a few times and see. Yep, there we go. So we have the last updated or the last synchronized but we've got another row, we've got a new row. So it hasn't deleted anything. So now if we go back into Synapse, I'm gonna still use the same ID. So I'm just gonna copy that ID. Okay. 
Whoops. Copy that into my uh, into my where clause. Let's run that. And what I've done is I've added the is delete. Whoops. The is delete column. Now the documentation actually says is deleted. In my testing, it shows up as is delete. And what we can see is if I just raise this up, okay, we've got the original two rows, well, the original row, the updated row. Now we have a row where the is delete column is set to true. It still hasn't touched the original rows. So the data in the original rows remains untouched. The created on stays the same as the original row, but all the attributes are now null. And that includes the, the contact ID. So actually to be able to identify which contact was deleted, we can't actually use the contact ID. We have to use the table ID, okay, to correlate what's happening. Okay, so now we've got three rows in there. Two rows of the original data and one row that says, well, now this record has been deleted. So you can now deal with that in your data loading or your ETL processes to say, okay, well, I'm gonna load some data in. I've got my modified on, so I can check if anything's changed between my last load, but also I can check to make sure, has anything been deleted from Dynamics? And I can do the appropriate thing downstream. Now, maybe that's setting some flag you know, as a soft delete, or maybe it's actually you do need to de delete it from the destination, but you've got the options there when you use append only. So the last row, the last, sorry, the last um, SQL that I just want to run is an identification, sorry, actually, I just need to change that to ID. And I'm going to copy that ID in and then run this select. And all this does is it just correlates the deleted record with the existing records in the table. Now, just let that run. And what happens is like under the hood, when Synapse is synchronizing, sometimes the CSV might not be available as you're writing the data. Okay, so we're gonna run that. And if I just expand up, all it's doing is it's just querying the table and getting the deleted records and then just joining back on to the original records to say, hey, look, this is these are now gone. OK, so do what you need to do further downstream. And essentially, the official documentation from Microsoft states that, look, if you're looking at data loading, you're looking at an ETL process, you're not just going to connect and just want current data in the table, use the append only mode, then you won't lose any data. You've still got all that original data there. You can still update and delete, but now you can deal with it downstream in a, in a data loading process. So super useful for any data loading or data warehousing where you're taking the dynamics data and you're processing that downstream for analytical purposes. And also really good to keep historical data as well. Now, in another video, we're going to look at the snapshot part of Synapse Link, where we do actually have some his historical data stored there, but there are some things to understand when we look at the snapshot side of Synapse Link. So I hope this has been useful. There's going to be more Synapse Link videos from here because we've got to look at maybe some ETL patterns that we want to look at. 
but also well what happens when things go wrong in Synapse Link I want to cover that as well how to re-enable and resynchronize data so as always if you have enjoyed the video please like put a comment in the comments uh, if you need any more information you know let me know in the comments section and if you've not already subscribed please consider subscribing so thank you bye bye